This is my five-year review of the Robinhood app. Bottom line up front, after five years, I still like it. And although it's gone through a bit of drama in the past couple years, they have fixed a lot of the deficiencies and it does what I need it to do. My name's Christian, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I talk about everything personal finance and I hope to inspire you to create a path to financial freedom. So in this video, I'll be going over Robinhood's strengths and weaknesses, their attempt to be this all-in-one financial tool, and I'll go into some of the improvements that I've seen them make over the past few years. So starting off with what I believe is their greatest strength, and that's their user interface. The app is very user-friendly and intuitive, and that's important. When you're investing your hard-earned money on your own through an app, you want that seamless, straightforward experience that inspires confidence. And I think Robinhood does this very well. The interface is simple and clean, and it's the type of app where, with just a little bit of basic exploring, you're able to understand the basic functionality. Another strength is their automated investing option. So if I wanted, I could tell Robinhood to pull $500 from my bank account and invest that amount into an ETF, for example, at the beginning of every month. I can automate that, and I don't have to worry about investing that amount manually every month. Investing in this manner naturally allows you to dollar cost average. It's a similar concept of money automatically coming from your paycheck every month and going towards your 401k. And this strategy of putting money into the stock market every month, no matter what's going on in the economy or market, is a proven long-term wealth building strategy. So a couple strengths there. Now on to a more controversial topic. And that would be how Robinhood makes most of their money. Robinhood makes a majority of their revenue from what's called payment for order flow. And it's what's enabled Robinhood to disrupt the investment banking industry and offer commission-free trading. For those of you that didn't invest prior to Robinhood, you used to actually have to pay a commission on every trade you made. So payment for order flow is a process by which a brokerage firm directs customer orders such as stock trades to a market maker. The market maker then becomes the actual entity that executes the trade and for letting them execute the trade, they give the brokerage a fractional rebate or compensation. So on the surface, this seems to be a good thing because we don't have to pay trade fees. But the downside is some believe you don't actually get the best deal on stock trades. The concern is that profit for the broker becomes the main objective and not so much getting the client the best deal. So basically, the deal that gets made between the broker and the market maker favors the broker, not the client. And in theory, the investor could have made that trade at a better price. And in December of 2020, the SEC actually fined Robinhood $65 million for misleading customers and failing to properly disclose to customers payment for order flow payments it received for trades that did not actually result in the best execution. Not good. The SEC was actually considering banning payment for order flow, but it looks like they decided not to for now. For transparency purposes, they have laid out the mechanics of their execution quality within their app. Ultimately, I'm okay with it. Most brokerages that offer zero fee trading use payment for order flow, so it's not just Robinhood. Moving on to more positive things, Robinhood is trying to be this all-in-one banking, investing, personal finance platform, and I like that approach. For example, I have my primary checking and direct deposit through a different bank, I have my Roth IRA through M1 Finance, and my individual stock portfolio through Robinhood, of course. It would be nice if I could have all of that in one easy-to-use platform, and Robinhood is taking steps to make that happen. They now offer the ability to direct deposit your paychecks, and they have a new debit card they call a cash card with a roundup feature similar to the Acorns app model. I did an entire video on that card. You can click on that right here. And as interest rates have been going up, Robinhood is currently offering 1.5% interest on uninvested cash and 3% interest on your cash if you have Robinhood Gold. So for $5 a month, Robinhood Gold gets you higher interest on cash, a higher limit on your deposits, the ability to use margin, and you get access to level 2 market data, which is usually used by day traders. As a long-term buy and hold investor, Robinhood Gold is really of no use to me, although it would be nice to have a higher deposit limit. They also have a new stock lending feature, and from what I can tell, this gives you the ability to earn interest on stocks you lend out. And Robinhood probably uses these to cover short sales, but the benefit of this is that you can still sell those stocks at any time. Although when you lend your stocks out, you do lose the SIPC insurance on that position. So make sure you read the fine print and fully understand all the details before you start this. And also know that there are different tax rules that apply to your dividends when you lend. So use caution with this feature. Not something that really interests me. Now, what would be of use to me is having the option to invest in an IRA. And fortunately, Robinhood has indicated they will be implementing IRAs on the platform soon. 
I currently use M1 Finance for my Roth IRA, and the platform is pretty straightforward. I really don't have a problem with it, but I do think Robinhood's user interface is a little more intuitive, and I'll probably switch my Roth IRA over to Robinhood once they get the feature on board. So you can have your paychecks go straight into your Robinhood, earn interest on your cash like a high-interest savings account, use the debit card with roundups and the different perks, and invest for your future with stocks, crypto, ETFs, and an IRA all in one platform. Another really important consideration for me is seeing improvement. Initially, the app was pretty limited, but since I've been using Robinhood, I have seen quite a bit of added capability, like adding the option for a beneficiary. The first few years, Robinhood didn't offer this, but now, finally, you can add a beneficiary to your account, and you definitely should. They've also added this new ETF breakdown, showing how the fund is constructed and the top 10 holdings, which is nice because before I would have to go out of the app and go to Yahoo Finance or Seeking Alpha to see this type of information, and now you can see the information where it should be. And they've incorporated basic financial education resources, which I think is underrated, and a great resource to better understand the stock market and investing in general. Along with that, they now have different warnings or what they call information labels, which alert you when a particular stock is at a greater risk of increased volatility or because the company is at risk of bankruptcy, etc. They have also improved their customer support. Initially, it was basically non-existent, and now you can actually get a hold of them. So prior to the meme stock short squeeze and all of the lawsuits, those features were not available, and now they are. Robinhood has also incorporated a drip option, which is a dividend reinvestment plan. So this allows you to automatically reinvest your dividends back into your dividend stocks. And early on when Robinhood launched, they didn't have this feature. And it was definitely one that I wanted within my account, so I was happy to see that they adopted that. Last but not least, crypto. Robinhood's crypto capability has steadily increased. They started with only the ability to buy and sell a few crypto assets, and you couldn't transfer crypto and... There wasn't an actual crypto wallet of any kind. And now they offer many crypto tokens, the ability to transfer crypto to different wallets. And as a matter of fact, they just released a brand new Web3 based non-custodial crypto wallet that's supposed to be more secure with no network fees. This type of wallet is something that I was really looking forward to them getting to. So if you've ever heard the term, not your keys, not your crypto, that concept currently applies to Robinhood's approach to crypto. It basically means when your brokerage has what's called a custodial crypto account or wallet, they are actually storing and taking custody of your crypto for you and you don't actually have control. Well, now they offer this non-custodial wallet and you'll be able to possess the keys and have full custody of your crypto. The new wallet's in beta and I hope to get access to it soon. So they're continually improving. Sure, they're not perfect, but they are doing a lot of things right. Robinhood's user interface is what really sets itself apart and is superior to others in my opinion. I just find myself drawn to that smooth, clean, user-friendly experience. As long as they continue making improvements to the platform, I'll keep it as my primary brokerage for my individual stock and crypto portfolio. And once they implement IRAs, I very well may transfer my M1 Finance IRA over to Robinhood. My Robinhood link's in the description. If you open an account with my link, we'll both get a free stock. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.